think it's the same guy from last week. I can't block him. Yeah, Rick in here. I already called him. Is IPS running? It's always running. He just made it through. All right, what's he doing? He made it past our protections and is trying to access the main system. Okay, I want you to run NMAP and Nessus detection, see if we can pinpoint his actual location. Got it. Call the FBI yet? Not yet. There's no point unless we've nailed down his intent. We know his true intent. He's trying to get information from our servers. He's spoofing his IP. It shows that he's here in the U.S. Yeah, but judging from the time he's taken to send and receive information, I'm guessing he's in another country. He's running a dictionary attack on our logins. If we don't stop him now, he'll be in our system within seconds. Get Agent Rutherford on the phone now. Got it. I'm seeing a whole lot of traffic on our port 22. Still trying to remote access. Still trying. Still trying. If I had a hacker or someone that came in trying to get into the system that shouldn't, um, how would they do it? So you would have to put yourself in that role or put yourself in that position um, to understand. My job in, involves a lot of research, not relying on just one log to track or trace your information, but relying on multiple resources to do so. With security, you have your information and your network, and you're trying to do your best to protect that information and your network. You always have people trying to get at that information and trying to be malicious in your network, and I just enjoy the challenge of trying to protect all that. I switched to information technology from computer science because after two or three programming classes, I decided I didn't want to be a programmer for a career. I really like technology, but I didn't necessarily want to sit in a cubicle all day. I wanted to work more with my hands and maybe do more of the physical part of computing. As I was growing up, I always wanted to play with computers, and, and that's, that's what I was good at. So I went into the computer science major, which is what was available at the time, and now they, they have the information technology degree, and that's, that fit what I wanted exactly, so that's what I chose to do. You know, a formal education is very important to students today more than ever. I believe that there's a win-win-win opportunity for students. A formal education that will provide a foundation for students years into their career, certification on specific technologies that will give them that edge in the job interview, and any hands-on experience that they can get. Programming was an essential part of my education here at Utah Valley. It helped me in my current career to be able to make intelligent decisions about software purchases. I don't code hardly at all within my uh, career, but my experience with my software classes helped me make intelligent decisions on software purchases that I needed. To be successful as a computer forensic examiner, uh, the basic skills that someone would need is a foundation in computer technology, uh, hardware, software, networks. Those are the basic skills that, that would be required. As a database administrator, uh, it takes an analytical frame of mind. You need to be able to kind of figure out how things work. I, I think uh, a lot of the very good database administrators that I know have a, a mechanical background. Um, uh, people who have those types of proficiencies are good at puzzles or are, are good at uh, you know, taking things apart and putting them back together and understanding how things work. And hiring IT candidates at the Sony facility in Salt Lake City looking for candidates that have a strong theoretical background in their education, but also have had a chance to get hands-on. An applied focus such as taught at Utah Valley, where students actually get into the details of software applications, of desktop applications, and of server environments, such as Windows, Windows Server, Linux environments that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. Some of the uh, careers in computer forensics uh, uh, would include law enforcement, 
but by and large the, the, the larger portion of computer forensic examiners would be found in the public sector, large uh, accounting firms, uh, banks, insurance companies. A network analyst handles all of the communication networks for an organization. That involves your local area networks, your wide area networks, connecting to the internet, email and web-based systems, anything that has to do with handling those networks and managing the resources that the organization has to compete in today's world, the network analyst does. Yeah, well, I'm actually a, a GIS, database administrator, and uh, um, DBAs, there's, there's several different kind of uh, specific career tracks that you can go down. Um, data architecting is the area that I do most of my work in where um, I need to try to figure out ways to model real world uh, scenarios and real world items and put them into a database so that they are meaningful when they're brought back out. Uh, you know, if you're doing a web search or something like that, um, the information you get back out of a database needs to be meaningful. And so um, my job is trying to figure out how to organize the data in such a way that it is meaningful and does represent accurately the things that it's storing. A network administrator today has great opportunities. From now until the year 2014, that job specialty is expected to grow more than 38%. The medium salary range is about $58,000 a year, which is a great opportunity for students. I think the future in computer forensics is tremendous. Uh, it's, it's, it's certainly growing. More and more our society is, is dependent and relies upon computers and other digital media. Uh, what excites me about information security is the, the challenge of the hunt. Uh, in, in this day and age, everybody has a network, whether it be a home network or a, a professional network, and there's always somebody out there trying to hack it or be malicious with it, and, and I just enjoy the challenge of trying to protect your information. Okay, if he gets through to our servers, you're gonna have about 30 seconds to locate his true IP before he starts downloading any information. You say I should let him in? No, I'm saying that he's gonna get in anyway. What I want you to do is be prepared to run a scan with the IDS. Have agent Rutherford on the line. Give him an admin login and tell him to hold on. Hacker's in. Okay, I want you to run another scan on his IP. This time I want you to hit it again and again and again until you get a different IP. That will be the actual IP. Scan running. Yeah. Same one. Same one. Good, located. Already locating him. It looks like he's in Eastern Europe. I can block him now. Good, do it. Got it. Good. Did it get anything? Not a bite. Great. Tell Rutherford that we've already stopped him. Tell him we'll send him the log files and we'll also send him the sniffer traces of all the activity. Got it. Okay. Good work.